Farsic. Çalkı. Farsa. It is a very interesting tool and there's nothing thin or delicate to break it. It easily goes into a pocket or into the back of my plaid and I can carry it around and pull it back out. Dressing a Jalligan. In order to start spinning, you have to dress your Jalligan with a leader yarn. And that is rather simply done, but slightly tricky. You're going to go round and round and round with yarn singles that's already spun. And then up, down. You stop when it's in the up position. Push it down. Come around and notch into one side of the cross from side to side. Wrap it around your thumb and half hitch under the knob, the knob. And now it's set up and ready to spin. One of the problems with shooting the video that I just showed you is I forgot there's more than one way to wind the yarn and start on the jalligan down here. There's actually three or four different ways. And I think I'd better show you the most common way to wind it on, not one of my experimental ways. Basically, I'm going to use regular yarn, already spun, to show you the winding on. You'll see that I've already wound on with blue yarn. We're going to pretend that I have made some more yellow yarn, spun it on. So I'm releasing it from the top. I'm unwinding it from the bottom and I want to wind this on. Anybody who is familiar with the Scandinavian Nasta pinball winder will recognize the technique. So you're going to have to pretend that I'm going to be spinning yellow yarn and I'm getting ready to wind it on. Oblique angle, turn it a little, oblique angle, turn it a little, oblique angle. It's about a 45 and I'm doing this right-handed. So what happens is exactly like Nastapin winding, it makes a pull ball quite tightly wound where it will pull evenly out from the center or it will pull evenly out from the outside of a Nasta pinball. When I get done, I always start from the top of the ball closest to the narrow end, pull it down through one of the sides of the cross and bring it up under tension to make the half hitch and tighten it so this is firm. That way it does not release when you go back to spinning on your jelligan. Spinning with the jelligan. I'm spinning clockwise with my left hand right now. The thread is going between my index finger and my middle finger. I am taking my thumb, and let's see if I can twist my hand. I'm rolling that knob against the pads of my finger with my thumb, like so. It is possible with some of these to use your thumb and your index finger and roll down or roll up with your thumb along your index finger. But Picture after picture shows this type of handling to make the twist along the pads of your fingers inside. And I'll do that right-handed because I'm a nice person. I'm not as good with my right hand. And then when you're ready, we're going to spin with the Jalagan now and I'm getting in the upper position, going around the base, half of the cross, 
making sure I have enough to do my half hitch of made yarn and beginning the twist and the drafting. I'm working from a wool roll-on, which was used, the carding of the native sheep was used quite often in the places where the jalagon is being used. When I feel the yarn and I feel there's enough twist, I store it away in the center section of the spindle stick up and down. I'm not being very careful about where I'm laying the yarn. I just make sure I'm rotating the spindle stick. Here you see it's too short. I can't get the half hitch. I back up to a point where it's top on the top, around the cross at the bottom, half hitch at the top, and begin again. I'm going clockwise. I'm making single wool yarn. You'll see my upper hand pinching and negotiating the twist between the two hands, letting it up into the drafted out fibers that are the size that I'm hoping for. It's a back and forth motion. And when I get better, we can do a kind of version of the long draw. This is a one ounce spindle. And by the time you have two ounces of yarn on this, you will be having a hard time getting it to flip around and give you more twist. It slows down. It's time to stop spinning, release the hitch, take it back from the bottom, finish doing your up and down winding, slide it off. It'll be much bigger than this. In fact, it might be as big as two ounces. The Jalligan's Common Features So what identifies them, they basically have four rather unique features. And the first thing is the cone shape or the tapered shape. The next thing is at the top, they have a very small knob. All of them do. On the bottom, a very identifying feature, they have a cross cut into the bottom. But the oldest surviving example we know of has a cross that basically is sculpted to look almost like the top of a bone or an animal's paw pads and it really does facilitate the use of the cross when you are tensioning the yarn before spinning.